please. Mr. Bravado, Mr. Cox, Ms. DeAndre, Mr. Jelinek. Here. Mr. Kella. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Shatina. Mr. Walden. Here. Mr. Strong. Here. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, this is the duly advertised meeting of the Joliet Plan Commission for the month of November. Uh, just by way of housekeeping, we're expecting two members, two more members of the board to come, but we'll get started anyways. We have a quorum now. We've got only two items on this agenda. One of them is a somewhat lengthy and complicated case. That's the first one, and that is A13-13. We've got P11-13 and then FP5-13. And they all pertain to the same area down at uh, the uh, Center Point Intermodal Center. For the first one, A13, that's an annexation of slightly less than one acre. It's located at 21101 Schweitzer. The request is for a classification to the IT Intermodal Terminal District Zoning that we have done for most of the property owned by Center Point. And then lastly, the approval of an annexation agreement. Next up is a preliminary plat of Center Point Intermodal Center Subdivision Phase 8. And then lastly is FP5-13, and that's the preliminary plat of Center Point Intermodal Center Subdivision Phase 8. Jim, that should be final plat, correct? On the last one, not preliminary? Yeah, so the last one is a final plat, not a preliminary plat, so we've got a little bit of a misnomer there at the top. The applicant in this case is Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad LLC. The request is for the thi above things, per uh, approval of the, the three above cases. The purpose is to create seven industrial lots for current and future development. Existing zoning is I-1 agricultural or IT intermodal. The agricultural will be county zoning going to into the city. The IT is property that's already within the city limits. The uh, zoning for the A-1 piece would be to go to the IT zoning district. The location is Center Point Way at Schweitzer and Vetter. Size of the property under this preliminary plat is 86.6 acres. The existing land use is its currently undeveloped industrial business park. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north is the Autobahn Country Club, which has an I-1 zoning. To the south is industrial in the center foot, put, footprint that has an IT. To the east is the same. To the west then would also be the Autobahn Country Club that has the I-1. Under site history, Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad LLC has petitioned for multiple requests heard and approved by the Plan Commission and the City Council for their Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Development. The majority of the center, the intermodal rail yard was annexed and zoned IT and approved with the annexation agreement as part of Phase 1 in December of 08. Phase 2, which included all the Center Point holdings around it, was approved in March of 2010. Under special information, the petition is requesting the approval of the annexation and phase eight subdivision in order to allow the continued industrial development on the 86.6 acre subject site. There is currently a proposal to construct a liquid natural gas and diesel fueling station on lot number 32 of block three and then a container storage yard on lot five, block four. Lots five, six, seven includes the one acre annexation site in block three are buildable lots for future phases. Lot 33 in block four will be part of a future phase. Lot 31 in block three will contain a naturalized stormwater detention pond. The proposed development plans comply with the IT zoning district and the city's non-residential design standards and the landscape ordinance. All public improvements will be required as per the subdivision regulations the, and the public works and utilities departments. Sewer and water connection fees, sewer surcharge fees, development impact fees will be required as previously approved by the annexation agreement. And then lastly, the Community Design Review Board reviewed all of these matters at their meeting on November the 7th, and the min minutes are attached. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? Hello, my name is Chris Pappish. I represent Center Point Properties. I'm with Geotech Engineering in Joliet. Thank you, Chris. Did you have anything to add to staff's report? I do not. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the commission? Are there any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a motion. Mr. Chairman, just a point of explanation, if I could read into the staff recommendation. We had a slight change from what was originally anticipated. Originally, we are going to have the preliminary plat, 
and then we were going to have a final plat on the entire site. There's been a change where the LNG fueling station is going to go down at that very busy corner of Center Point Way and Vetter Road, Baseline Road. Uh, that is uh, got a little bit more work to do, so that's not on for final plat at this time. Center Point is in the process of developing another container storage yard up by Schweitzer Road and what would be Center Point Way at Patterson Road, and that's going to go proceed forward. We have no problems with that. Uh, I think at next month's meeting, we're going to come back with a final plat for the LNG fueling station area down there at Vetter in, in, in Center Point Way. So right now, when, when they originally applied for it, they were going to go with everything. They're not quite ready to go with the one, so we're sort of backing that off, but it's still included in the preliminary plat. And then lastly, we're asking that the preliminary plat be considered as a conditional approval. The public works have a couple of very minor modifications that need to be made, so what we're asking with the conditional approval is allow it to go forward, they'll make the corrections before it goes to City Council, and then the recommendation that we're say asking for is that it not proceed until those modifications are made to the City Council. So you, we need to approve the annexation and the preliminary plat, and then we'll come back for the final plat? Uh, you'll, you, we're doing one final plat now, you'll do another final plat next month instead of doing both of them now. So Actually, the it would have been one preliminary with one big final, but now we've broken the final into two pieces. Very good. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for A-1313, P-1113, and FP-5-13. So move for conditional approval. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Jelinek? Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. All right, now under the new business portion, we've got a vacation. We've got V-4-13. <coughs> And that's a vacation of a 10 foot wide by 120 foot long public utility and drainage easement on the west side of lot 201 and on the east side of, side of lot 202 located in the Ashford Place subdivision unit number one. The common address at that location is 6609 Drum Court. The applicant is John Staten of Staten Architects. They are the architect for the property owner. The requested action is the vacation of a public utility and drainage easement and the purpose is to allow the construction of a single family residence. Uh, existing zoning in that area is an R2 single family. 6609 Drum Court is on the north side of Drum Court at the top of the cul de sac. The size to be uh, vacated again is 10 by 127. It's currently undeveloped property. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north is single family and agricultural with an R2. To the south is single family with an R2. To the east is single family with an R2. To the west is the same. Site history, Ashford Place Unit 1 subdivision was approved in, in 2005. Special information, the petitioner plans to construct a residence on the two lots in Ashford Place subdivision. The public utility easement proposed for the vacation bisects the proposed site. Therefore, the easement will be relocated to the west edge of lot 202, and that's depicted on the vacation plat and, as well as the plat of uh, easement dedication. The Joliet Public Works has reviewed the request and has no objection to the easement vacation. Northern Illinois Gas, AT&T, and ComEv have not responded to the vacation request at this time, at the time of this writing. The petitioners indicated that ComEd underground line leading to the power pole at the front of the subject site has been rerouted to the west side of lot 202, consistent with the location of the new easement. And then lastly, the Community Design Review Board from November the 7th, those minutes are attached, and that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? <clears throat> Hi, Chris Pappish with Geotech, uh, representing the architect and the property owners. Very good. Anything to add to staff's report? Uh, other than the property owner informed me now that the comment line has been moved, has already been relocated, and it is going to a street light uh, at the common corner between the two lots. Okay, very good. Any comments or questions from the commission? Yeah. Um, do we take it that if we don't hear back from uh, any of the uh, uh, comment or anything like this, which there you have, but that it's okay? It's okay. And usually it's been my experience that, especially when you've got uh, undeveloped vacant lots, that a lot of times the utility companies may not have put anything in there. And because they don't have anything in there yet, a lot of times they won't go through the trouble of responding. So a lot, in most cases, no news is good news. 
if there were something buried there, obviously the petitioner would have to relocate that as well. But like I say, sometimes it's real hard for us to get confirmation from those utilities. Uh, they're like everybody else. They've got uh, a way more work with way less staff than they ever had before. So sometimes getting an explicit answer from them is kind of tough. What happens if they start digging there and something's there? Uh, you guys probably know. I mean, the, and the owners of the lot probably know. They've probably checked into that. So I'm assuming there's no worries and nothing there. But uh, usually the only thing that would be put in there would be um, that we would know of at this stage of the game would most likely be if there were a water or sewer line there. But, again, we know that because our folks, uh, you know, inspected everything as it went in. Usually the service lines... Uh, usually don't go in until we get, you know, a house under construction. So we don't anticipate that there's anything there. But again, I don't know, Chris, do the owners of the property, the, the petitioners, have any idea? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at our plan. Talking about it. Sorry. If you could give your name and address for the record. Yeah, uh, John Stanton, 2310 Plainfield Road, Crest Hill. Um, we had ordered Julie to come out, and usually Julie locates all the utility on the yeah, ground. They do. And the only the only thing that they spot is electrical, you know, combat. So uh, we had that relocated. There's no other utilities running through there. Right. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the audience? Please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Uh, yes, my name is John Tonelli. I uh, live just west of, of there. Uh, I have one concern. Uh, I know Dave owns property just north of there, and uh, my only concern is that if he puts a, a driveway in between the properties, uh, the water runs to the back of his property there when it rain, when when it floods and it has flooded numerous times back there, approximately five times since I've lived there. And I'm afraid if he puts a, a road in and raises it up at all, uh, it's going to hold the water back and possibly uh, flood us because I know the water has come up within. 12, 14 inches of coming into my home already. So that's my only concern. And Mr. Chairman, we've got Scott Gapsovich, our engineer, that would uh, look over this. And then again, too, Chris is the one uh, who would, who would uh, also have knowledge about that. I don't know if you have any comments on the drainage. There are, there are storm sewer drains in the rear of both those lots. Um, they go east and west Right. I was just going to say that, Scott. This is this is in a pre-construction stage of the lot. The the black dirt's been stripped back. Yeah, a lot of times the developer will leave it low with the consideration that they're going to put a base and they'll use that material to build the lot up. They've got the black dirt stored somewhere else, and then the the idea behind the drainage and utility easement is to slope away from the house to that easement. So, but of course, since we're taking that easement out in the center. When the house is built, it'll just go to now the existing perimeter easements. Okay. This is towards the back of the property is where I'm talking. That, that, that's where the storm sewer drains are located. Yeah, in well, drain. they're insufficient. Well, to, it could be that. I mean, there was, when, there was just much water running a lot of through times there. When the, when the subdivision isn't developed, they put up fabric in those to try to prevent silt from getting in there, and sometimes those aren't maintained. Especially since it's not really There's connected. no black dirt or no grass there. And they have both get okay. plugged up at the surface and they need to be cleaned out so the water can actually get into the structures. Otherwise, it's not going to go. So. Right. Maybe if that sewer was about that big around it. Well, it's, it's usually more the, the structure at the surface that's locked. Because <laughs> there's a lot that. more water there than, than a 12 inch sewer. A lot more. Well, it, it builds up over time if it can't drain away. If over a period of time it's raining, 
and it's n none of it is mm -hmm. draining well, away, then it starts to build up. So. That, that's what I'm concerned with. I walked back there with a pair of chest waders on. There was 30 inches of water. Now a 12-inch drain isn't going to handle that. It runs around the end of the property there and, and goes to the to the uh, that's creek. Not, not graded. Not correlation between. Yeah. I I mean I have I have nothing we against check, him putting any sure home the in there. I just hope that if he puts in, that it, that it stays level, so he doesn't raise it up any. Well, they typically always raise up every lot. I understand. Up. Well, yeah. The house is raised up the lot. The house is the highest point on the lot. Typically. Right. No, I'm talking the drive that he that he'll probably put in. There is there is an approved grading plan that sets the top foundation of the house, so that would have to be followed and inspected. And when they and build the foundation. Yeah, sir. If we could ask our, over here, are you the next door neighbor into the lot to the west? You're in the house right next door. No. Okay. No, mm -hmm. I'm to the back. Uh, next to the farmhouse. I gotcha. So does your your house uh, faces on Caton Farm Road then? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, very good. Any other comments or questions? Please step up to the microphone. Uh, yes, my name is David Drum. Uh, I live at 17 Ramon Run, South Philly Cash Driveway. The area that he's talking about um, on the existing property, there was never going to be a road that would go to the back of my property from Cape and Farm. It, there, was a, there was a soap and then a swale. That, that's, you know, the back of the property. There will never be a, a said road going from the back of the property to my, you know, the right of it. I just wanted to clear that up. But, he was worried about that. There's never, I'm not, I'm not going to put a road from my existing property to where I'm building the house. That's all I have to hand me on. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for V-4-13. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Jelinek. Hi. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Okay, we have nothing under the study session portion of this agenda. Next would be the approval of the minutes from the October 17th, 2013 Plan Commission. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And then lastly, we have adjournment. Do I all, do I have a motion to approve adjournment? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor signify by aye. Aye. We are hereby adjourned. Thank you very much and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>